G'day, Angie Mahara here. Have you been hurt by somebody, discarded or ghosted by a person with borderline personality disorder? And are you wondering what's going to happen because with, with the new person? What's going to happen because they maybe lined up somebody. Maybe they cheated on you, but they lined up somebody one way or another before they discarded, as people say, or ghosted you more appropriately, probably. Well, what is that about? And the question that I get asked all the time about that is, so they're just going to go on and have a great life with this other person, this next guy, this next woman, um, and I'm like going to miss out and I'm going to be alone and then I'm going to be lonely and alone and then everybody's going to think it really was my fault. Have you ever thought that? I've seen a lot of people express that. And so for a lot of people in relationships, being really hurt by somebody with BPD, if the discard or the ghosting hasn't happened yet, you're afraid to let go or you're afraid not to be hoovered or you're, you're afraid to actually let go of the relationship or even go no contact because you're thinking they're going to be with someone else or maybe they've already moved on. But, but in the case where maybe they haven't yet or you don't know or maybe they have, you're thinking that that's going to leave you lo alone and lonely, but that w which can happen and it can hurt a lot, right? And then you have to get into your own healing recovery journey. But what if this person then goes on and just everything's great for the next person. And then this idea that it's going to be like, it looks like it's all your fault. Well, first of all, that's not true. And secondly, in whose eyes is it going to look like it's all your fault? It's really important for you to think about, are you going to think it's all your fault? Or is it the next person they're with? Or is it somebody else? Or even in the cases where they might do people with BPD, an ex or whatever the case <coughs> might do a smear campaign. You know, you can't control that. And it's, it's, it can be painful, but again, what other people think is, is not your business. Like it, it, for people with codependency, it's really difficult not to be concerned with how other people might think of you. But this idea that, <coughs> It's going to look like all your fault because they'll go on and be in another relationship real quick. As if somehow, I guess that happens a lot more these days, doesn't it? But as if somehow that would be seen by healthier people, won't be seen by healthier people as reasonable or as some reason that you should then be blamed for everything. So, and this idea that when they go on to someone else, and then, you know, what happens a lot is personal BP might ghost you. And then they go and they are with someone else. And maybe there's, you know, you don't go no contact or whatever's in the meantime. And then you get hoovered. And you get hoovered, why? And not all people with BPD hoover. It's really important to remember that. But why do you get hoovered? Because the relationship can fall apart really quickly in, in the case of many people with BPD. So this new relationship they started, this idealization phase all over again can really crack with splitting really quickly. Sometimes it takes a lot longer for some people with BPD in relationships to go to that splitting and devaluation that really kind of changes everything, whether people realize it the first time or the 10th time or the 80th time or whatever, it, it, you know. But the first time that you really get devalued by somebody with BPD, no matter how long you've been with them or how long that's taken to happen after that, idealization honeymoon phase it's never going to be the same after the first time but people don't realize that so often when they go off and they try you know they they just leave you and then you don't really go no contact but <clears throat> you don't hear from them and then for some people it's a short period of time for some people it's a longer period of time some people will never hear back from them but they blow through the next person and then they hoover you back and what do you think about what that really means in comparison to is it your fault or isn't it your fault or did you do something wrong is that why they ghosted you or discarded you and the thing is no it has it has unfortunately nothing to do with you 
you know, you'd think it would have something to do with you because you were in this relationship with them. But they totally don't see you. They don't attach to you and don't love you unless and until everybody's a little different with this. But I would say it has to be almost full recovery. Why? Because so many people with BPD can be mid-range recovery and know a lot more intellectually but not have really identified in a in a deeper level of therapy that true emotional self like who they really authentically are emotionally they might be doing that all from their heads so the the important thing to realize here is when you're ghosted or discarded by a person with bpd it's not your fault and these fears that they're going to go on to have a great relationship they can't they just can't because there's so much therapy that's required for that to take place. And that takes a long time for people with BPD, substantial amount. It's not like a year of DBT or two years of DBT or a couple to two or three or even five or six or seven years of therapy. It's really a long, long process. So they're not without all of that treatment, which they can't get quickly, even if they can find it, get into it, commit to it which is un unlikely for a lot of people, unfortunately, with BPD, because they just don't make those choices. And if they haven't chosen it up to date, but even if they have, it's not like they're going to grow and change overnight. So really, I hope that this video will help you to just think about that, what you're fearing the most when you've been ghosted or discarded, that they're going to move on and just live happily ever after. It's not true. And the other thing about it is when they do this to you, right, and they, they discard you, ghost you, and they're off to the next person or they've already set up, you know, who, who they're going to be with prior to even leaving you or, or, or ghosting you, um, which is another betrayal. Um, but they are not going. So it seems like, you know, they make it look like in that honeymoon idealization and they get with people so quick. They make it look all happy, happy on social media. They do. Facebook, Instagram, whatever. You have to be very careful to, you know, it's difficult for people, but it's really better for your mental health. If you can just, you know, try to block that and not watch that, because that's kind of like what I've called, you know, a stealth reverse Hoover. Like you're not in direct contact with the person, but you are watching them or what's going on with them on social media and everything on social media. I mean, for a lot of these people definitely can look way better than it is, or they're having an idealization honeymoon phase, but then that's going to change. And even if they're fighting and arguing already, not getting along, etc., they're still going to put out the happy, you know, we did this, we did that, blah, blah, blah pictures. So you have to realize that you're really not taking good care of yourself there. You could be really hurting yourself even more by looking at that because it gives an image and often this illusion of a relationship that the person that ghosted you would be with somebody else or is with somebody else now and quickly often. That illusion that somehow they're so happy and then there you are and you're alone and you're lonely and you know there's a shock to that. And for people with codependency, what you really need to think about is what's really happened and why Why do you think it's okay? And so many people do feel this way. And, and it goes back to childhood woundedness too. Why do you think it's okay uh, to just, maybe like if they come back, you know, you want them to come back. You want, either you want them back or if you want them back, let's start with that. Why do you think it's okay or why do you think it would be any different the second or third or fourth or fifth or tenth time around? And I say that with respect because I work with lots of clients who've been around the cycle of on off, on off, getting rehoovered. They take off, they ghost, they go with someone else, they come back ten plus times. And the thing is, if you're going to cycle back with them, it's never going to be any different. So this other idea that it was your fault that they did this to you, that they just ghosted you. No, that's another one of those things that, of course, people feel. And people with codependency are going to feel guilty. They're going to feel like this is a horrible experience that you're going through. 
if, if you're in this position right now, or you have been, or you are again, you know, um, or you're in a relationship where you're staying because you're afraid to let go, even though you know you probably really need to, because you're afraid they'll go off and they'll be all like happy and it'll be perfect with somebody else or it'll work out well with somebody else and you'll have missed something and you'll be left alone. Well, the truth is people with BPD have so much woundedness that they can't relate like healthy adults because they're not healthy adults. Um, they still have all that woundedness from childhood that they need to work on in therapy, which takes many, many years and more than DBT therapy. And so this idea that it was your fault, no, because they don't really attach, especially when untreated. But even if treated mid-range, you see, this is the issue. They might be able to attach some. And, and I'm talking about the majority of people with BPD. It doesn't mean every last single one of, of somebody with BPD. Because some people really get into treatment. Some people really are changing their lives. But even when they're doing that, many of them still can't have relationships. They're still so triggered so easily. And maybe they're more aware of that. And maybe they don't even catch when they've been triggered again and split and devalued somebody, you know, in, in some other kind of relationship or a family member or something. But the thing is, they're not, it's not your fault. There's nothing you could have done to have stopped them from what, from their devaluation and the way they saw you, which goes back to their past woundedness. It's really not about you. And I'll just add this. How could it be about you when he didn't even see you in the first place or most of the time? And that's painful, too, to realize. And I understand that. But so don't be thinking that it was all your fault that or your fault, really, why they just ghosted you at all. And then also, no, they're not going to be happy with the other person. The same thing is going to play out again. And the next person with the person with BPD is going to get unfortunately, as hurt as you might be right now. And it's the shock of it all. And so if you're thinking that somehow this is going to, you know, if, if you let go of a relationship or if you go no contact with somebody, you're still kind of waiting to see if they, you know, hoover you back or not. First of all, they don't all hoover. So you could be waiting a long time and kind of wasting a lot of your life and being really focused on the person with BPD after you get ghosted or discarded or even just a breakup, like like a you break up with them. It's still a very painful place to be for multi-leveled, multi-layered reasons that people need to get into therapy. And, and I'm out here to help people with if you resonate with me. But the thing is, you need to take action in your life right now. And you need to look at how much you're focusing on them. But please know it's not something that you did wrong. It's not your fault that they just up and took off like that. And any relationship breakup like that, it's not, it, it's their responsibility what they've done and how they've left you with no closure. And people with BPD, unless and until, well, you know, really close to recovery, not just some treatment, unfortunately, they don't do closure. They don't know how to do closure. And remember, they live so much of their lives from the lens dissociatively with triggered emotional dysregulation of the past. And it comes flying into the here and now. So they really don't see who you are. They're really not hearing you a lot of the time. They get triggered so easily. So please know that if you've been ghosted or discarded, it's not your fault because it's... It wouldn't have mattered if you'd have done this differently, said that differently, not done this, not said that. It's not like any any reason. I mean, no, okay, wait, let me put it this way. When they ghost or discard you, there is no reason behind it. There is no logic behind it. It's not like if you'd have tried harder or you'd have did, did, done this or that or the other or not done something. It's got no rhyme or reason. It's when they just get triggered to a strong enough, for lack of a better way to put it, strong enough split of devaluation, devaluing, and they need distance really badly from engulfment fear, and they just go, and, and they just sever, and it just cuts off because they totally, this is where it's not, there's, there's, there's levels of splitting in the cycles. 
when they get to the deepest level of split, it is cut off. They ghost, they leave, they're gone. Maybe not forever, but you know. Um, but it has nothing to do with you. It, it really didn't have anything to do with you. It has all to do with what's really happening inside of them that they're, they're not even really aware of. So, and then the last thing I just wanted to cover here quickly in this video was the idea that, you know, like, yes, you will be left alone or, or you have been left alone and it can be lonely and it, it can, and it hurts beyond description. I know that I, I don't even want to try to say that. I mean, I'm the ex of two people with BPD and a BPD NPD. So I've been in your shoes and I know that pain and it's almost indescribable, right? It just hurts so much. But here's what I want you to think about. That pain, yes, it hurts so much because they just betrayed you and maybe it wasn't the first betrayal. Uh, like maybe in many ways they betrayed you and they didn't see you and they likely weren't attached to you in most cases and they don't know how to love in any healthy, adult, consistent, congruent way. And so you're really hurting. And please understand and think about the fact that, yes, you're hurting from what just happened or what happened a while ago. You are maybe over-focused on knowing more about BPD, etc. And people have to work at that because you're trying to find something out about the pain of the ending of the relationship, which you might really feel like it is your fault. It's not your fault. It's not your responsibility at all. So there's that. And then there's the fact that this triggers people with codependency, which is most people who are in these relationships, back to something that is, to one degree or another, an adverse childhood experience from your life. And you have that wounded inner child I'm always talking about, to one degree or another. And, you know, the more I work with clients on this, and I've been doing it for over 30 years now, but the more, it, it, you know, this is why I would encourage people to get some help. And if I resonate with you, I'm out here to help you. People look back over their past, you know, over the childhood and they're like, well, but I can't, I don't think like my parents weren't that bad or my, my, my childhood was okay. Because when you're, when you're in so much pain from just being ghosted by a borderline and that relationship rupture, cause it's not even, it's, it might be an ending for, for good. You don't know. It, it should be for you really. When they slam the door in your face, you need to leave it closed. Take that harder route toward finding out more about yourself and healing yourself. But what I was just going to say was you are not just hurting because of them. You're hurting because of something deeper from your past. And I help people with that inner child healing, family of origin work and self differentiation. And that's a process that's going to help you the most after a relationship rupture. It's not even like a breakup or if it was a breakup with somebody with BPD that's what people with codependency need. So just know, and by the way, I just want to add in here really quickly to your loneliness. That's a whole, I'll do a whole other video on why you're feeling so lonely. What is that loneliness? And people are always saying, I'm just, I'm trying to get rid, you know, I'm trying to get rid of this loneliness. And there's a reason you can't get rid of it. And I'll talk more about that in an upcoming video. Just know you've been ghosted or discarded by somebody with BPD or you're afraid to let go because of what I said earlier. You need to take care of yourself. So you need to let go if that's the case and that's the fear holding you back. And don't try to work on how much you're worried about what other people think of you. It's very, it's not easy for people to do. And so just know that because you were ghosted or as some people use the word discarded, which I think belongs more to narcissists, but whatever, it had nothing to do with you, actually. And that's painful to know, too, because they were so not attached and they were so seeing you as a parent figure, right? That wounding parent that just know it's not your fault. But now it's going to be your responsibility to make some really difficult choices for yourself, to take care of yourself, to learn more about yourself, to leave the door closed that they slam closed. Take care.